Thank you, Julie. So um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. So today, as Julie said, we'll be covering genome-wide association studies on UKB RAP using Regini workflow. So um, uh, my name is uh, Anastasia Sedlakova. I'm a senior community engagement scientist working at DNA Nexus focused on UK Biobank. And Ted, if you can introduce yourself. So I'm Ted Ladaris. So um, I'm a bioinformatics trainer at DNA Nexus. Thank you. So um, let me show what are the learning objectives for this session. So uh, by the end of the session, you should be able to describe how Regina utilizes genotype and phenotype information for GWAS, prepare input files um, of merged assay genotypes, prepare uh, phenotype information in a phenotype file to use then in Regini, uh, perform single variant association test on human genomic data using Regini, and explain, we will explain you next steps for GWAS analysis on the UKB RAP platform. So um, just a note uh, that this workshop will be really very intense because it will be a lot of code, but don't be like frustrated or sad. We are not trying to shock you with the code. We are trying to um, make to create for you a reference that you can look afterwards when we will send, send you uh, material after the webinar. So um, what are the useful webinars that we already had? One of them is overview of the UKB RAP, where you can learn about how you can interact with UKB RAP. And another is uh, two sessions on Jupyter Lab, single node Jupyter Lab and uh, Spark cluster Jupyter Lab. So, uh, just a reminder of what genome wide association studies are. So, um, particularly, we're interested in like is disease or phenotype associated with a genetic variant, specific genetic variant. And here you can see a three different examples of three different single nucleotide polymorphisms. And two of them have no uh, association with disease. So this one is rare, both in, ca in cases and in controls. This one is both quite frequent in cases and in controls. But here uh, we could see that there is a change that there is, my, there is much more uh, var variant uh, present in the case of then in controls. So we'll be testing uh, for association of allele of some variant with a, a known phenotype, and we will be using for that covariates and haplotype blocks. And the statistics method that we'll be using is whole genome regression, and it will uh, include covariates and interaction terms, but we will go more into the details later. So GVAS on RAP, here is a very uh, complex diagram that we will be going through slowly now, and then you will be seeing the different parts of it uh, later in the presentation. So all of it starting with a cohort creation, and there are different ways how you can create cohorts. So first, or one of the option is you start with a, a data set, you go to cohort browser, you create cohort there, and then you use table exporter to actually extract phenotypic data. Or you can uh, do the, make the cohort and then you can use JupyterLab to create a pheno, uh, or pheno file and covariance file. Or you can omit the cohort step altogether and just use the phenotypic, the, the whole data set and uh, load it and work with it in JupyterLab. So this is the first step. The second step is Create, uh, generate FENA and covariance files. And uh, for this, uh, you can either use JupyterLab, which is the focus of this session, or, or you can use the data that you extracted using table exporter and then uh, use them in uh, JupyterLab. Then it, the whole GVAS, uh, uh, GVAS step, where we are doing, um, we will be using two types of data for uh, Regini GVAS. One is um, uh, genotype calls from microarray data. We will make a QC of them and we will use them in the first step. And the second is whole exome um, data that will also be doing uh, quality control and then we'll be using them in the second step. And more details will be covered by Ted in the second part of this webinar. 
And so the last part is then working with the results. So how you can visualize, how you can extract some important information there. And here is the schema, which is actually more detailed or like not more detailed, but this is an extract of what we will be covering today. So uh, the cohort creation will be just um, showed by us briefly, very briefly, because it was covered by the Jupyter Lab session. So if you will see that I don't get how you create cohorts here, then uh, click on our link about Jupyter Lab session and go to the first part of it. Okay, so I, um, I think that I repeated Regini quite a few times. So what is actually is, if you have never heard of it, uh, this is a, a framework or a tool for uh, GWAS um, with whole exome regression modeling. And it's very fast and memory efficient. It, it can work both with the binary and quantitative traits. You can also use multiple phenotypes. And uh, the like. if you can briefly explain the core of it, it used ridge regression to actually decrease number of, um, uh, of variant and to summarize them into blocks. And by summarizing into blocks, it reduced memory size and will also make it faster because you can load only one block at a time. And Regine actually used these reduced genotypes to estimate background for the second step. So here is a, an extract from Regini paper that we encourage you to read before you start with Regini. When they made a, um, different comparisons of Regini with Sage, and you can look that uh, in the benchmarking studies that uh, Regini is um, more fast and it uses less memory. So here we, you see that this uh, abbreviation LLOCD or first or SPA, and we will cover what it is um, in a few slides. So um, in order to like briefly look at what are the actually different steps in Regini, uh, you can look on this schema. So what we have here, we start with a loading phenotypic files and the common genotypes. Here we'll be using microarray data. Uh, Q-seed both phenotypes and Q-seed um, uh, genotypic data. Then we'll go, we start with a step one where we do the ridge regression. So remember, we are reducing number of variants, we are grouping them into blocks and uh, we're reducing dimensions by that. So uh, with that, we have uh, in the end, 23 local predictions for each phenotype for like leaf, uh, on leaf one chromosome out. And with that, we can start our second step where we again use the same phenotype file. We use the predictions from the first step and we use like um, increased set of um, variants. In our case, we'll be using whole exome data. We then perform linear or logistic regression based, based on if you have um, quantitative or binary trait phenotype to test association, and then you have a results. So uh, I think the two, two slides before, I was mentioning that we have like diff the region have different modes of first and spa. So here is like a brief uh, comparison of two modes. Where once you use them, if you have an imbalanced case control ratio, which is like, I'm almost sure that like you have less cases than controls. So you can, um, you can actually choose between two uh, methods. First is first correction, which is computationally intense but it's good for ultra rare variants, which is the opposite for the settle point of approximation, which is not so computationally intense, but it doesn't work well with ultra rare variant. So you need to use a um, 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 minimum minor LL count filtering before actually using this method. Uh, one thing that we also want to cover is how the missing values are uh, carried, handled in Regini. So in the first step, um, when we have like uh, association with uh, uh, array data, the missing values are um, handled by using mean imputation. And uh, in the second step, all of the, um, all of the samples that have one or at least one phenotype missing, if you have multiple phenotypes, are removed from association testing. So these are default settings. You can use 
force impute if you want to use impute well use in the second step, or you can use strict parameter if you want to exclude um, uh, samples that have at least one phenotype missing altogether. So you can decide and you can play around with the different settings of, uh, of Regini. So what files we will be using? Um, for this tutorial, we were working with a 200K release. So here are the different links to the different files. Uh, but uh, now uh, the 300K is released and the 450K is released. So um, we will show you uh, where there is actually the places where you need to change something. So most of the time where you need to change is you need to change field names because you see that the field name is different for each of uh, the release. And you need to change a uh, folder name because it will be like 200K release, 300K release and so on. So this will be um, considering whole exome data. The microarray data will be the same because they were released a while ago. So um, this GVAS uh, webinar was, ex ex um, uh, was inspired by our um, by work of our colleague Yi Chi Huang, who had a, um, a tutorial, very nice tutorial that we uh, uh, recommend you to look at in the our documentation. Here we have a link in Science Corner. There is a Regini workflow with Alzheimer disease by proxy. So Yi Chi made a quite complex uh, phenotype. Um, creation, and then she was using also um, liftover to actually um, convert genotype array from the older genome reference to the newer gen genome reference, and then she was using Regini, the first and the second step. So we really encourage you, before you start with Regini, as an addition for this webinar, to look at the, the, this uh, tutorial. So what are the inputs for Regini? You could use the genotype files in a different formats, either peeling, begin. Um, then you can also use uh, phenotypes. Then you need to use phenotype file. Uh, it's a tab delimited file. And we highly recommend to use covariate file because in Regini you can specify covariates. You can either use uh, .cov uh, file or in our case, we just created one file that contains phenotypic information and covariates, and we just specify which variables are phenotypic and which variables are um, covariates. So let's start with the creating cohorts briefly. So here, right now, we're in this step. So what we will do is we will use cohort browser to create uh, cohorts. Uh, for this case, we'll be using ICD-10 um, uh, disease classification, and we will be using summary diagnosis because ICD-10 diagnosis could be like in a hosp hospitalization or some. So you will see if you will use Field Explorer that ICD-10 diagnosis will be used in like different. There are different variables that use it, but we will be using the summary one. So like uh, across all of the hospi uh, hospital hospital and patient records. And for this case, we'll be using, we'll be looking at diabetes. So here, how our, our cohort look like. So the cases cohort will have the ICD-10 include diabetes mellitus and um, logically the controls will have it excluded. So now that we cre created, um, Cohorts, we can go into Jupyter Lab. We can start our Spark uh, Jupyter Lab and create Phenon covariate files. So, if you don't know what Spark Jupyter Lab is, uh, I suggest you to look at the second session of Jupyter Lab where Ted explains it into details. So, as you see in the schema right now, we're here. So, we start with Jupyter Lab to create and to make control quality of. Uh, uh, phenoty phenotypic data, and then we'll move on with uh, working with genotypic data and holoxone data. So um, in our case, the phenotype is binary trait. It's either a person has diagnosis or not. And covariates, it could be a number of days of moderate physical activity or 
age of recruitment, uh, sex, or if a person ever smoked. So the bold one are the one that we will be using here. And you can play around and look and explore in Field Explorer using cohort browsers with all of the different fields that you can consider as covariates. So uh, don't be afraid right now. I will be looking, I will be showing a lot of codes. Currently, we are working on making this code available. But so, uh, and the code is, majority of the code is taken from the tutorial that I was showing you a link before. So there will be a lot of uh, code, as I said, not to shock you, just to uh, make you as a reference when you will be looking at your own. So uh, just if, if you are overwhelmed by the code, just focus on the call, call outs. So what we do here, we initialize Spark connection and we identify and load dispense data set. Because of the structure of uh, dispense data set, will be, it will be in the root directory of your project. Because we have a part phenotypic data, we know that we need to use participant entity. And I need just to note here that you will see that even though this study was conducted for 200K, you will see that there is like about a 500, 500K um, participants, but it's because phenotypic data are available for all participants. Whole exome data are not available for all participants so far. So that's why, because we're not linking, we will be linking uh, the phenotypic data to exome data and genotypic data later. So we choose entity and we load our cohorts. So these were the two cohorts that I were showing you before. Then we want to use uh, fields, a uh, different fields ID. So how did I know that I used this fields ID? I was exploring data set and that's why I came with this fields ID. And we also will get um, UKB wrap field name for the UKB, uh, UK Biobank showcase field ID. And we will then print some summary, uh, summary about what we'll be actually using. So here you can see field name and field title, and there is the different coding that uh, this field has. So um, after we decided what fields we want to retrieve, we're actually retrieving them. So here we're retrieving cases, and here we're retrieving controls, and here we have a bit more configuration because the controls data set contain more data. Now we, are, we need to concatenate two data frames together. And actually what I wanted to pinpoint is that when you're retrieving data, you get a Spark data frame and you can use the Pandas method to convert it to Pandas data frame. So here we are concatenating two data frames together. And now you can see that data are really available for all of the 500K um, um, participants. We now need to create a phenotypic um, variable and we're creating it by, by looking which EID are, are in cases that they have this phenotype and the one that are not in cases are, have zero, so they're controls. So now you can look that among all 500K participants, we'll have, we have about um, 460K controls and 42K um, uh, cases. So we, now, we can, now we can focus on actually making sample QC. So here are the different uh, conditions that we'll be using. Uh, we'll be checking that gender and genetic sex are the same. Uh, we'll be checking that participants had white British ancestry because, uh, so because the majority of ancestry of participants are white British and we want it to be like applicable to one um, ancestry group. Um, also, we'll be checking there is no sex chromosome aneuploidy and that there is no kinship found. So uh, you can then look at this variable and play with it that maybe like less. Uh, this is very strict that we will be doing. I'll show it to you here. So this is no kinship found is zero, but there are also different values for these variables. So uh, we wanted to make it um, strict to make um, to, to make it without like noise for our association, but feel free to uh, play with these parameters. And so you see that after um, quality control, we're seeing that there is a 200, actually like 
we roughly like half of our samples were used or filtered out. So we have 255k of controls and 21k of cases. Actually, right now we're down with the QC. So we just need to select those um, phenotypes, those samples for which we have a uh, whole exome data available. So this is actually what we will be doing now. So we need to rename our um, columns and make it in the format for Regini. And right now we're loading uh, our um, uh, whole exome data and we are here, we are um, filtering out only the one that have whole exome uh, sequencing available. And then the last two steps, we are uh, saving our uh, file as a CSV file, with tab separated, or sorry, tab separated file. And then we're uploading it to project because um, just to uh, remind you, everything that you are doing in Jupyter Lab will disappear once the session will end. So definitely after all of this hard work, you need to upload your uh, phenotypic file that you created back to project. And here is the phenotypic file, how you can see it. So we have a family ID, individual ID. This is our phenotypic variable. It's binary, as we were talking before. And these are our covariate, covariates that we'll be using for the GVAS analysis. So this was uh, the, uh, the step with the creating phenotypic file, uh, file. And Ted will now cover how you can actually make QC, actually the, the heaviest part of it, because this was quite easy. So uh, the heaviest part of it, how you how we can actually make a quality control of the genotypic and holoxome data and actually run the regene itself. So. So just want to preface this that this is kind of this is a complicated process. If you've run G, um, GWAS before, we've tried to kind of break it down. And again, we're not going to go through every single line of the code, but it is there for your reference. So you can basically use it to kind of conduct your own GWAS analysis on the platform. Uh, so the main tool that we're going to be using today is going to be called Swiss Army Knife, um, and it is an app on the platform. So let's talk a little bit about it. So if you're not familiar with apps on the research analysis platform, you can think of them as software environments that have kind of inbuilt scripts uh, that exist on the platform. Um, and what does that mean? So specific, you can use them to run specific bioinformatics tasks. And so this is the example that we're going to work with. Um, this, is, this is a very useful general purpose app on the platform called Swiss Army Knife. Um, and you can see it has inputs and outputs. And we'll talk more about what those are in a, in a second. More importantly, you can basically run these either with the UI, which we're not going to be covering today. We're mostly be going to be covering using the command line interface to run apps today. Um, I think this is probably the most useful for most of, the, most of us who are uh, bioinformatics focused. So we're going to be looking at Swiss Army Knife. So what is Swiss Army Knife? Um, basically, it is a you can think of it as a collection of like the great uh, the NGS greatest hits. Um, so there are all, all sorts of software tools that are kind of built into Swiss Army Knife. Um, the ones we're going to be focusing on today are going to be Regini, of course, but we are also going to be using the Plink app to uh, basically do some QC and some merging of files. Um, if you're interested in what exactly Swiss Army Knife has, and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, um, we encourage you to go to this link here, um, and it talks about exactly what is in Swiss Army Knife. Okay, so let's talk about actually running Swiss Army Knife. So there are kind of two components, and this is going to be like the true of all of the code that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, the first is basically we is the command that you are actually going to run within Swiss Army Knife. So again, because it's like a software environment, you're going to call like the software tools like you do on the command line. So for example, here you can see that we're going to be running Plink um, to merge some files. We'll get into this example a lot more 
in a, uh, in a little bit, but I just wanted to kind of talk about the basic um, commands. So this, this run merge variable contains the command that we want to run within Swiss Army Knife. So this is contrasted with the actual command that we're going to be using to run Swiss Army Knife. Um, to, to do this, basically to run the command or run the Swiss Army Knife app, you're going to need the DX toolkit installed. I'm happy to point to links to, that, to how to install that on your own machine. And uh, basically, you're going to use this to basically kind of start the app up. So you can see it starts out with DX run Swiss dash army dash knife. But there are there are um, basically two sets, two different kinds of inputs that Swiss army knife requires for you to do useful things. So you can see that there is this flag and it's called dash I or dash I I dash I in. Uh, so this is basically where you can kind of submit the input files. So these are basically the files on the platform that you want to utilize. Um, and then there is this dash I CMD. So this is basically that command that you want to run within the Swiss Army Knife app. Um, it is uh, using DX run is very customizable. So you can, for example, set your instance type here, um, and so here we're using a 16 core instance. So again, so um, just as I just want you to take the, the takeaway I want you to come up back out of with from the slide is really that there are kind of two main um, arguments that you have to specify with Swiss Army Knife. You need to specify file inputs, and then you need to specify the command that you want to run. And the coloring is going to be the same for all of the code that we're going to we're going to look at. So let's talk about the requirements for pre-processing processing the genotype data from the bulk files. So this is just kind of a quick, um, just to kind of orient you. So we just talked about um, building our pheno and covariates file. Now we're going to be doing like the individual steps. And so we will be going showing you code for kind of each of these individual parts. Um, and we'll go through these piece by piece. But before we get started, we need to talk about what the inputs are for each of these steps. So um, in the first and parts B through D, we're going to be working with merged files. Um, I'll show you the recipe for basically, or the, the, the command line code to basically build these merged files. So we're going to be basically utilizing uh, the genotype calls. Um, I'll, I'll get more specific about what that means in a second. Um, but we're going to be working with the files in Plink format. If you have worked with Plink before, you know that Plink also works with uh, the, BG, the BGen format. Um, so that's a different set of triplet files. So these, the merge files are what we're going to be using in step one of Regini. So that estimating of the background. So for step two, we're actually going to be using the exome files that are split by chromosome. So one thing to keep in mind is that the genotype calls are actually in um, the old reference. So they are on build 37. So these coordinates need to be uh, translated or lifted over to the new reference, which is um, HG38. Um, in our example, and if you look at um, Yi Qi's tutorial, which we talked about a little bit, um, you'll see that uh, we, we used basically this tool within um, Swiss Army Knife called PyCard. And within PyCard, we used the liftover VCF tool to basically translate these cord lift over, over these coordinates to the new build. If you want to do this, um, you'll need to have a, so we have links here to the appropriate files. So this is the chain file that you'll need for liftover. And this is the FASTA file reference that you'll need for the liftover process as well. 
Okay, so just want to kind of address, there's one question. So I'm lost with on what we're doing with Swiss Army Knife. Is this for genotype QC specifically? Yes, so it is for genotype QC, but we're also going to be running Regini and we're also be, going to be doing some merging with it. So like the, like the name says, Swiss Army Knife is kind of this general purpose NGS tool. So hopefully that answered your question. So let's talk about all of the steps of running Regini. And we have tried to make this <laughs> as kind of digestible as possible. But again, um, we're limited in our time here. So um, we want to basically kind of give you at least the basic gist of the process. So in this, this the first step is basically we are going to be taking our genotype calls and merging them using Plink. So let's talk a little bit about the genotype file naming convention. Uh, this is important because as you remember, like the different um, exome, uh, exome releases have different uh, UKB fields. So this is very important to know. Um, so uh, every genotype file begins with UKB followed by the field ID, um, underscore C and chromosome. So chromosome is going to be important because at one step of the process, we'll be running the cr uh, chromosome file separately. So this is one, this is an example here is that, um, you know, you can see that this, this, for this particular file, we have a bed file and it's for uh, UKB field 23155. That is the 200K release and it is for chromosome one. So let's talk about the inputs for part B. Um, again, we're doing the merging step here. So we need to have, um, we're going to be using the autosomal chromosome uh, plink format files uh, from this particular folder. So it's going to be in your bulk folder, genotype results and genotype calls. So you can see that this, um, uh, we have like the individual chromosome files here. And our goal with this step is to glue them together to form a single merged file. So this was the same code that I showed before, but I just want to highlight some different kind of aspects about this. Um, so this is the this is the command that we're actually going to be running. So we're going to be running plink um, using the merge list uh, option. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our list of uh, autosomal, chromo autosomal chromosome files, um, genotype calls, and we're going to merge them into a single file and we want to output a bed file. So this is going to, this is the main command that we're going to run. The rest of this code is basically kind of support code to en enable this. So we basically are going to use, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about this in the Jupyter webinar, but we're going to be using uh, DXFuse to basically copy um, all of the, all of the uh, genotype calls. And um, basically once we have those into, the, into our um, instance, we can basically list them and then we can basically save them as a, a list of files to merge, and then we can merge them. So again, this is a command that we are running in Swiss Army Knife. Um, you can see that we have an additional input here. Um, so this is the basically our phenotype file that we generated before. So when I'm going through this, it's going to have the same format. So I'm going to show you the input. I'm going to show you a little bit of code and then I'll show you the output. So that's going to be kind of your way to orient yourself like in understanding where we are in this process. So once we have that and we run that code, um, we're going to be running, uh, we're going to, we'll have these merged files. And so you can see that these files contain um, these are bed, this is a bed file that has merged chromosomes from one to 22 and the associated BIM and FAM files. So these are going to be used in our next step. So now we want to do a QC of that merged files. So we're going to be using Plink for that. 
So just so we're very clear, so these are the inputs for this step where we're going to do the um, QC filtering. So the first is going to be our uh, phenotype file. And the second is going to be those merged files that we just created. Um, if you are familiar with using Plink and Plink 2, you know that there is this, uh, it's very powerful in terms of filtering out genotypes. So in terms of removing low quality variants, uh, we're going to be using the minimum um, uh, MAF and MAC, uh, MACs to basically kind of redo the, remove these low quality variants. So this is the command that we are going to be running within Swiss Army Knife. So um, let's look at the actual code that we'll be using. And again, if it's unclear, this is actually code that you are running on your own machine and it sets up the Swiss Army Knife uh, job that actually executes, um, executes the commands. So I just want to kind of take you through the, the basics of this. So we are, we've tried to make these uh, scripts very customizable. Um, we are going to be using this data dictionary in our project as kind of the place where we're going to put all of our outputs. So we basically specify this um, particular uh, direct, this particular variable called data file directory. This is the command that we want to run. This is going to be the name of our, um, of our output. Um, so it's going to be Wes underscore Ray snips QC pass. So this is the output of the QC step. Um, and we'll see what that looks like in just a second. And then we need to pass in the required input files to Swiss Army Knife using that dash I in arguments. So here we're passing in our merged files that we've just created. Um, and again, you can see that this is the this is that variable that we are using to store the command that we are running in Swiss Army Knife. Okay, so um, now that we have executed Part C, let's talk a little bit about the output of this um, of this part. So the main output that you are going to utilize is this um, dot s, uh, snip list um, file here. Um, you're going to be using it as input for part D. So talking about part D, um, now we now that we have kind of um, basically brought brought our merged files and QC'd them, now we can basically use them as inputs for Regini step one. So uh, for uh, the first step, as um, we were mentioning, we will be using microarray data, and uh, we will we want to estimate genomic uh, background by, we will be using uh, blocks uh, of predictors. So for, in order to make a blocks to actually summarize our um, data that we have, we'll be using a penalized ridge regression. And actually one of you were as asking about uh, if we can use whole exome data in the first step, the thing is that authors of Regini recommend that we that we can that we need to use whole genome representation, meaning that you either use whole genome sequencing data or array data that were that are across the whole genome. Uh, authors do not recommend um, use exome data, meaning like not the whole representation of, of genome. And so the uh, result of the first, uh, there are multiple of them, and we will look through that. And one of uh, crucial is that you are generating blocks of haplotype blocks of uh, in the genome. And by, um, by squishing your data in these blocks, you are uh, saving memory because you can uh, work in the second step one um, one block at a time, and you're saving uh, space and time. So um, where are the inputs file that we will be using? So here is our list of uh, the SNPs uh, from the filling filtering. We have also phenotype uh, file that we, uh, that we, um, uh, that we uh, created before. And then we have uh, our merged and lifted files uh, from part B. Okay, so um, 
So here is uh, the uh, exact uh, command line what we were using. So um, we were um, we used merged bat file to calculate um, background. Here we are specifying phenotype uh, file and covariance file. As you can see, both of them are um, the same file because we put all the covariance and uh, phenotype in one file. Uh, we have a filtered list from the part C. We are specifying also the phenotypic uh, column. In this case, we have just one phenotype, the binary, you remember the binary diabetes one. And then we have covariates here. We have an um, age, sex, and ever small. We are specifying the block size to create. So remember that we are squishing our data. So here we can specify block size. And here is a prefix for uh, output file. Here is how you can do it using a command line interface. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, in Swiss Army Knife, then uh, this is a lot of code. Just use it as a reference when you will be uh, when you will be working on that. Just to uh, specify here that uh, that was going through this notation before. Just that uh, this part is uh, is specified here. This is actually the command. Um, the command line specification for Regini for the first step. So here is what we have as an output. Um, we have a log file, then we have a leaf one chromosome out uh, uh, file that we will be actually using as an offset in our second step. And uh, here we're having like uh, predictions. So, um, Let's right now move to the uh, QC for whole exome data. So as you remember, uh, all of the data need to make a quality control, all, both genotype and whole exome data. So here we're now in the step in here. Um, so what are the inputs for these, um, uh, for these data? So uh, again, phenotypic, uh, Phenophil, as we have in that, as, as we were using it before, and then um, exome sequences and pilling uh, uh, format file by uh, chromosome. And um, again, this is a busy, busy slide, but we more intended it for use as reference. So um, here, uh, Ted uh, uh, make a very good work to make this uh, runnable on uh, whatever. Uh, whole exome release you have. So here you need to specify the directory and you will see it based on the uh, field ID, if so, field ID also, and the uh, directory that you created in your, uh, in your project. And um, for this one, because the chromosome, the files are per chromosome, you need to run it in um, in the loop. And as you can see here, we are using it uh, for autosomes uh, only. And again, this is the command line option that we are doing. And here is the Swiss Army knife uh, settings that uh, we are using here. So what are the output that uh, we have here? So we have a, a list of SNPs that are passing our QC filtering. And uh, so this is again per chromosome. And um, the one of the last part in the whole our Regini um, step will be the step two, where we'll be using actually whole exome sequencing. Um, and as uh, a swear point here that we already QC it and that they must be QC it. So um, if you have a case control ratio that is imbalanced and uh, we encourage you to look in the, uh, uh, in the article, we provided you the link before uh, in, in some slides before when you can see that there are different uh, comparisons. Okay, so uh, we encourage you to look at the article when you will see that the, there, there are different uh, comparison of uh, a different imbalanced case control ratio and what were the results that they um, yeah, achieved. So, but basically use uh, the first method we recommended to use because if you find it too computational intense, that switch to the S SPA. And so, now, what we'll be also using for that will be uh, 
leave one chromosome out uh, predictions, and they will be using as an offset. Um, and if you want to look at the specifics, how, it, how it's used as an offset for binary or quantitative uh, traits, we encourage you to look either on the, um, in the uh, article or look into the Regini uh, website. They have a quite nice uh, digestible description of their method in quite uh, decent details. So these are the inputs. So basically, you know, all of this, kind, this is kind of the final step. We spent all of the time generating these input files. Um, so for example, you can see that we have that. Um, and again, this is by, we're going to be running by chromosome. Um, so uh, we'll talk about what that means in just a second, but we have um, the QC, uh, the QC for each of the chromosomes. Um, we have basically the outputs of part D, which are our um, uh, leave one out, leave one chromosome out um, uh, results. We're going to be inputting our pheno file. And then finally, we're going to be running our individual West files. Next slide. So this is um, a little bit about um, kind of running the Regini app. Um, just want to show you, so the, the parameters we showed you before are identical, um, but these are the additional parameters for part, uh, step two, which are the regression parameters, um, and then the output prefix, and then um, putting, making sure that you have that input. So let's go on to the next slide. So uh, apologies, this is very small, but um, we wanted to fit all of the code in here. So this is, again, we're using a for loop here to basically spawn individual workers to run on the individual chromosome files. Um, this makes it, basically makes it run very quickly. Um, and so you can see that we need to specify all of the inputs here. Um, you can see that at the top, like I have two variables set, um, exome file directory and field name. So if you're using different releases, you'll have to adjust that to your release um, because the basically the files are in different folders um, on the platform based on your uh, when you have dispensed the, the, the exome data. So once we kind of cycle through this, this is kind of the, the magic moment. Basically, we generate these Regini files. So let's go on to the next one. Um, so the outputs here are basically the Regini files, um, and we we need to basically make uh, convert this because it's in a space delimited format to a tab delimited format. Um, so I we're not going to go over that section. So uh, it, basically the code is pretty pretty understandable. Um, so uh, on Anastasia, could you just skip over? Um, so we'll we'll skip over yeah. the section. Yeah. But just a moment. Um, sorry. Yeah. No. No problem. So let's talk about you know all of the output of this. So we basically uh, concatenated our Regini files. So what what do these files look like? So this is an example of a Regini file format. Um, so you can see that there are some very particular important. Um, columns here, including the chromosome, the gene position. And then if you look on the very right, that highlighted column is the log 10 P value. So we are going to be utilizing that. So let's go to the next slide. So we have a tool that is built in, into RAP called Locus Zoom. Um, if you're familiar with Locus Zoom, it lets you kind of visualize GWAS results. The most important thing is that you need to map um, the columns in the in your results file to to so Locus Zoom knows what's in them. So I just included a screenshot here that these are kind of the this is how you map everything into Locus Zoom. If you go into the next slide, um, so this is basically um, the Locus Zoom app, and it is an interactive app that lets you kind of explore your GWAS results. And if you go into the next one, um, what's nice about it is that you can zoom into particular variants and see what are kind of the uh, genes that are nearby. So it helps you kind of understand everything. Um, 